We now have our spirit reading by Brother Stan Williams, followed by prayer by Brother James Scott, Sr.
there is a season and time to every purpose under the heaven. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the 8th Baptist Church, 1400 Stair Street, in Warwick, Indiana. Pastor Dr. Kenneth Sibidor. Come study the Bible with us every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Don't forget our Father Revival. The Adrian Baptist Church Father Revival is October 15th to the 17th at 7 p.m. Prayer will start at 6 30 p.m. Our guest revival will be back to see Jeff Gordon of the Adrian Baptist Church. Today we send our Celebrate our men of ages, men of the day. Our men chair. Yes, with Brother Sir Ellis Woody, Brother T. John Curtis, Brother John John. Our men of ages are second to Adult men with $25, young men will be 10 Our member staff will be held today on September 27th. During our Sunday school hour. In the age of Baptist Church pop up shop will be held on this Saturday, September 28th. Please make a note of the new time. The hours will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. One of our upcoming events on October 5th, Christian Education. Deaconess will be on Saturday, October the 5th at 11 a.m. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. James 5 and 15. Please remember our sick members and forever keep them in your daily prayers. Amen. They are Sister Sylvia T. Holton, Brother Milo Tony, Brother Elroy T. Joyce Harris, Brother James Armour, and Sister Louise Wright. Start of the week. God brings men into deep water, not to drown them, but to thank Let's go. 
sat there beside this fine person next to me. You never know what they went through just to get here. And on the day that you will feel those crowns on your face with a big smile. And if they don't smile and give you a hug, you just love to see it. And you can say that to somebody and smile and say, Who's that? And you walk with me to Monday 2019. And here at the Asia Baptist Church. We thank God for your presence all today. And we do ask that you continue to pray for our families, let's keep all of them in prayer. And again, we thank God for your presence all today. We have a beautiful program, so we won't be late. Uh, this is a moment of time. Time is God's program. Time is with the Lord. We have all of us to do. Uh, he says in his word, to bring you all the time into the storehouse that they may be needed in my house. And prove me now in which say the Lord the most of the Bible. I hope you don't know that the Holy Lord's presence. And they shall not be known enough to receive it. For you know the Savior is. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, He was rich, yet for your sake. We pray as high as we have to be So, upon the first day of the week, let us work through the night and school and ask the Lord as a prosperous year. Not budget in all of us, but the Lord and our children. We ask that all of our times will be coming to you. Okay. Well, I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Those who get a blow. This time we're going to do our men of the year, young men of the year. Amen. It's a really good introduction to my brother, Amen. He's one of the new young men of the year. Uh, Sister Wax, did you do anything? Uh, who, who can read? Anybody read? You got that too, brother? Oh, 
Thibodeau, Rev. Newton, and uh, these wonderful chairperson that put on a very, very successful Men's Day in 2019. Thanks again to uh, Pastor Thibodeau, who made me nervous for a second year in a row. Um, and uh, I do appreciate everything that he's done in his support this year as well as last year for uh, Men's Day again. The, uh, I always knew one day I would be at this pulpit, but I never knew in what capacity. But I right do now. thank him for uh, entrusting me this year to speak to you guys. Um, I did ask Pastor a few months ago if I could actually have a role this morning. <laughs> actually, he said no. Uh, he said, uh, you're not ready for that, sir. <laughs> but uh, I do thank him and I do appreciate all of his support, as well as your prayers and your words of encouragement from you and the Asian family. Thank you again. Um, I wanted to thank my sister as well. I know she dropped me more than one time. <laughs> I know it should But uh, thank you. She's always been an inspiration in my life. Amen. Um, thank you to my family and all my friends and co-workers that are here to support me today. Uh, special thanks to my wife Amen. who puts up with me every day. Christian man comes with many characteristics. 
humbleness, yeah. obedience, and a true understanding of faith. Yeah. But being a Christian doesn't come easy. As a Christian man, you may be ridiculed, mm. mocked, outcast, or just plain ignored. Despite these things, I believe we should live our life as Job, an example of true obedience. Even when all he had been through, Job kept the steadfast faith that God had commanded of him. Yes. Anything worth having, there's always a serious sacrifice. Amen. Just as Job did, we have to continue to have the undying love for Christ and to be that authentic example of Jesus. We as Christian men must mentor the younger men inside and outside of the church. Teach them that violence is not the answer, but peace is. Yeah. Hate is not the way, but love makes all things possible. Yeah. Christian men must embrace the love that God has for us and proclaim what he has done for us. All this in hopes that your good deeds and the righteous life you live will somehow touch someone to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? All right. Just as the men I spoke of earlier who were pioneers uh, for the social equality as African American men, there were some men that influenced my life to be a Christian man as well. Maybe you know some of these names. Zebedee Bridges, Amen. Ernest Coleman, Amen. Brother Leon Harden, Amen. Brother Freddie Johnson. These men had a positive impact on me as well as many others, many of us here today. What these men were able to give to me were the instructions on how to live, this, live a spiritual life, a life that will guide you to salvation, a life in which your blessings will overflow if and only if you follow God's commandments as they are given. I am proud to be an African American man, but I am more grateful than anything to be a Christian man. Amen. We have to labor, or better yet, read God's word to be that Christian man each and every day. Paul's message is all believers should live a life that is pleasing to God in which the, in which the key to spiritual growth is. Excuse me. So here, part one, we have a good explanation, a good representation of what a Christian man should be. Let's look at part two, living. Jesus Christ wants us to walk in this Jesus Christ wants us to walk in this message meaning to live our lives by his principles. God created man. He gave us a manual, the Bible, in which we ought to follow. It would be foolish for us not to do so, not to read it and to tell all the world about it. Our Father has given us a roadmap to eternal life. Why wouldn't we follow it? God wants us to mature and grow stronger and our ability to live a godly life. Sometimes the term or concept of living gets misconstrued. The idea of a big house, a fancy car, right, plenty of money in the bank, to some is the best way to live. It could be, said, be considered as living your best life. But until you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you haven't even scratched the surface of what your life, what your best life could be. For those of us who know Christ already, just imagine where you would be if you had accepted Christ in your life. Some of us probably would not be here today. I'm sure we all agree we are in a much better place with Jesus than without him. I couldn't imagine my life in any other way. One of the most difficult points in my life was the loss of my mother. I was in a state of confusion and full of questions of why this happened. I went through a bunch of lonely nights. It took a long time before I was able to walk back into these very doors of this church. It took me to pray and ask for the strength to move on. I understand more today that God is in control and has a plan for all of us. We have to pray and let him have his way. And in time, God's time, not ours, he will see us through. God has laid out his requirements. His instructions are given to us in his word. God doesn't have, he doesn't have to love us, but he does, even when we don't love ourselves. He loves us in spite of all our sins. 
And living a Christian life takes work. It's a walk that you must be willing to take all the way. In 2 Thessalonians 3rd chapter 11 and 12, Paul wrote, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly working, not at all. Now those that are such we command and urge by our Lord Jesus Christ that the quietness they work and eat their own bread. Living a Christian life is what God expects us, expects of us. We should live by faith and not by sight. Okay, so we, we've had the opportunity to have a good understanding of what the representation of a Christian man, an idea and an understanding of what living and what God expects of us. So in part three, which is pleasing God, this is my favorite part. These words should be speaking, be spoken at any and every opportunity on a daily basis. Please, God, forgive me. Please, God, what more can I do to lift and praise your name? Please, God, continue to allow me to be an instrument to continue to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Paul spoke to the Thessalonians and said that we please God when our love for others show the kind of love God has for us. I know sometimes we have trouble with loving our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, and especially our enemies. But just know if you don't, you're increasing the risk of not receiving the beautiful blessings that God has for you. What are some of the blessings God has for us, you ask? Well, we please God when our lifestyles demonstrate to the outside world that we are saved. We as Christians should strive for salvation. Salvation is the deliverance from sin and its consequences. Believed by Christians and brought by the faith in Christ. I don't know about you, but I desire and aspire for salvation. God expects as Christians to model our lives with a Christ-like love. These are the things that are pleasing to God. In closing, our goal as a Christian means we should live Ladies by and gentlemen, faith, I have to end this video. In God or in the doctrine of a religion based on spiritual apprehension 